Hey guys, it's Ben here with Assessment Day. The test experts are here to help you with your psychometry tests and to teach you how, with practice, you can master them. Today, we're going to be looking at mechanical reasoning tests. We're going to go through three different questions, looking at three different fields within mechanical reasoning. We have fluid mechanics, combustion, and forces. We're going to break these down for you, so hopefully next time you have a mechanical reasoning test, you'll ace it. Let's take a look at our question on fluid mechanics. A bucket of water has a leak on its lower side. As the water level goes down, what happens to the speed of the water coming out of the hole? A. It increases. B. It stays the same. C. It decreases. D. It reverses. Or E. Impossible to tell. Take a moment to pause this video and see if you can work out the question for yourself. You shouldn't need more than 30 seconds or so. The correct answer is C. It decreases. And the reason is because the speed of the water exiting the bucket by the hole is proportional to the pressure exerted upon it. So when the bucket is full, there is a greater volume of water trying to exit the bucket via the hole. A greater volume of water is a greater mass of water and therefore it exerts a greater pressure. And the greater pressure translates to faster speed. As more water leaves the bucket via the hull, the volume of the head of water decreases. Thus, the mass of the water decreases and the pressure decreases as well. So to help illustrate this, here we have a graphic of the bucket with the hull filled with water. So here the gravity is acting and allowing the mass of the water to push it down and through the hull, getting weaker and weaker and weaker until the head of the water has passed the hole. And then the water will stop once it's gone past the hole. So returning to our question, the bucket of water has a leak on its lower side. As the water level goes down, the speed of the water decreases as it comes out of the hole. Three identical candles were lit and covered by individual jars at the same time. Which candle would have its flame extinguished first? A. Candle in a small sealed jar. B. Candle in a big sealed jar. C. Candle in a small jar with holes. They all extinguish at the same time. Impossible to tell. Take a moment to pause this video and see if you can work out the question for yourself. You shouldn't need more than 15 seconds or so. If you said A, then you'd be correct. Let's explain why. Here we have what's called the fire triangle or combustion triangle and it shows that in order for a fire to live we need these three components. If one of them goes, the flame will die. Now we're going to loosely recreate this question with the candle and see what happens to the flame under different conditions. So this is my recreation of jar A and as you can see when I place the lid over the top very quickly the flame is extinguished. This is my recreation of jar B and as you'll see slowly but surely the flame will diminish and die out. It has more oxygen to burn through than the previous example and yet the result is the same. In my recreation of jar C I didn't have a glass of holes in so I'm using a sieve it's the same thing in that it still has access to oxygen and as you can see the flame is still burning and it's not going to go out anytime soon. Returning to our question and keeping in mind the examples and the fire triangle, we can clearly now see the answer A, candle in a small sealed jar, is the flame that's going to extinguish first. Many fire doors have an overhead closer, which automatically shuts the door with the use of a spring mechanism. If the springs were made thicker, what effect would this have on how the door closes? A. The door will close slower. B. The door will not fully close. C. The door will make a screeching noise as it closes. D. The door will close faster. E. It will not make a difference. Take a moment to pause this video and see if you can work out the question for yourself. You shouldn't need more than 30 seconds or so. If you said D, then you'd be correct. Let's explain why. Here I have two metal springs to showcase what's going on inside a fire door closer. 
When a force is applied to a metal spring, it has a resistant force to return it to its original form. Like so, if I place the force on the spring, and if I let the force go, it returns to its original position. As you can see with this spring, it's a, a thicker spring and requires greater levels of force for it to change. And as a result, the resistant force is equally a lot stronger than the smaller spring. Let's take a look at some fire door closes in action. Just like in my previous example, the resistant force in the spring is being used to close the door. The heavier the door, the thicker the spring. In other words, the thicker the spring, the more force that is applied. Now we've learned that thicker springs means greater force, returning to our question, we can determine that this greater force as it pulls the door will make the door close faster. Now I'd love to know how you're getting along with your mechanical reasoning tests, so let me know in the comments section below. If you found this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe for more video reasoning comprehension guides. So with that, keep practicing, keep focused, and I'll see you next time.